What's up, guys? Alec and Kerry here. I recently had a subscriber ask me if I could do a tutorial on the Snatch Grip deadlift. I've already done very in-depth tutorials on both the conventional deadlift and the sumo deadlift, which I'll link below in the description. Now, the Snatch Grip deadlift is a little bit more of an advanced variation, and as such, in this video, I'm going to assume that if you're attempting to learn it, that you're already pretty comfortable and at least moderately proficient with performing the basic tenets of a conventional deadlift. If you need a primer on basic deadlifting mechanics, you should check out those other videos before you watch this one. In case you've never heard of it or seen it performed before, the snatch grip deadlift is simply a deadlift done while taking a wide grip on the bar, usually at least with your index fingers out to the rings on the bar, or even wider if you choose. The name comes from the Olympic lift known as the snatch, where athletes deliberately take a super wide grip on the bar in order to shorten the range of motion the bar must travel through to reach a locked out position overhead. This wide grip does some interesting things to the deadlift pattern. One, it greatly increases the range of motion of the lift. Two, it allows you to really drop your hips and get a whole lot more quad involvement. And three, and this is the most important difference of all, it drastically increases the stress placed on the upper back, especially as you break the bar off the floor. This final reason is the main reason why most people use the snatch grip deadlift as a variation, to increase upper back involvement. And it's very good at doing this, which makes it a viable pulling variation, whether your goal is strength, hypertrophy, or athleticism. With that little briefer out of the way, let's move into the tutorial. Most people are going to be more comfortable on this lift taking a stance that's a little bit wider than their normal deadlift stance and flaring their toes out a little bit. If you own a pair of heeled weightlifting shoes, you may even want to experiment with using those as well. All of this is going to allow you to pull your hips down a bit more, which is going to help you get your quads more involved as you break the weight off the floor. The important thing here is to play around until you find a stance that allows you to pull your hips down slightly lower than in your conventional deadlift, but not so low that you would basically just be attempting to squat the weight up, all while maintaining a neutral spine. As a side note, this exercise requires a rather large degree of mobility through the hamstrings, hips, and ankles. And some people, whether due to joint mobility issues, soft tissue limitations, or simply due to anthropometric restrictions, are simply not going to be able to get into position with a neutral spine. If you find yourself to be in this category and you still want to give this exercise a shot, you should elevate the bar onto the lowest blocks that allow you to achieve proper positioning with a neutral spine. The basic rule of thumb when it comes to the actual snatch is that you want to grip the bar wide enough that it rests in a position just over the top of the crease of the hips as you move into an erect position. Depending on how long your arms are, this may require you to take a pretty wide grip on the bar. However, for the purposes of the snatch grip deadlift, we don't need to grab the bar quite this wide because where the bar rests when we're standing at lockout is rather inconsequential in this case, unlike with the snatch. Thus, how wide you choose to grip the bar for this lift is going to be somewhat dependent on your mobility levels, as well as what you're hoping to achieve by performing the lift. The wider you grab, the more mobile you need to be to reach the bar and maintain a neutral spine, and the more heavily the movement is going to tax the musculature of the upper back. As you move in slightly narrower, the mobility requirements go down, as does the stress on the upper back, the range of motion decreases, and the movement becomes more and more similar to a standard deadlift. So, finding a happy medium is going to take some experimentation. Personally, whereas I grasp the bar with my index fingers about two to three inches outside the rings when performing snatches and snatch variations, I like to grab it only about half an inch outside the rings when performing snatch grip deadlifts because this allows me to use a little bit more weight and I have less trouble maintaining a neutral spine this way. As with all deadlift variations, the optimal height to set your hips at is going to be determined by your anthropometry, as well as the stance and grip width you've chosen to take on the bar. You should begin your setup with your shins about two to three inches behind the barbell in order to give them room to shift forward as you engage your quadriceps. Now, assume the stance width you've determined earlier and grasp the barbell at the predetermined width as well. Next, you should set your spine into neutral and apply a small amount of tension to the barbell. Then, using the weight of the barbell as a counterbalance, pull your hips down and allow your shins to shift forward until they make contact with the barbell. 
you've now found the optimal height to set your hips as you initiate the pull. Now, if you pull your hips down too low, your shoulders will end up behind the barbell and you won't be able to break it off the floor without having your hips first shoot up. On the other hand, if you leave your hips too high, your shoulders will likely end up too far forward of the bar, which is going to turn this into a stiff-legged snatch grip deadlift and remove the quadriceps from the equation altogether. But if you follow my tips, your shoulders should end up just over top of the barbell with the system in perfect balance and the stress ready to be distributed across multiple muscle groups. In the snatch grip deadlift, overcoming inertia and breaking the barbell off the floor is going to be the most difficult part of the lift for the majority of people. As you initiate the pull, you want to focus on your quadriceps. You may find it helpful to think about pushing the floor away from you rather than pulling the barbell up. This will help you activate the quads and prevent your hips from rising at a rate that's disproportionate from the shoulders. This synchronized rising of the hips and shoulders is the most important part of the initial phase of movement. You'll also feel more stress on your upper back during this portion of the pull than you do during a regular deadlift. At this point in the lift, as you approach the transition over the knees and ultimately the lockout, the basic mechanics of the movement, with small deviations here and there, become pretty much identical to a conventional deadlift. A large part of the stress is going to shift from the quadriceps onto the hamstrings and eventually the glutes, with the upper back remaining as a large determinant of how well you maintain posture throughout the duration of the lift. The lockout may feel a little bit strained at first as the barbell is going to rest much higher up on your thighs than you're used to, but you quickly adjust and assuming you've maintained proper positioning up to this point, the lockout itself shouldn't pose too much of an issue because the weight you're using on this exercise is going to be considerably less than what you would otherwise be lifting during a conventional deadlift. One final tip, pretty much all of you are going to want to use straps when you do this exercise unless you have one ironclad, and I do mean ironclad, hook grip. The angle of the hands with the wide grip just makes it really difficult to keep a solid hold on the bar, especially when you're doing reps, and it absolutely tears your hands up. Even Olympic weightlifters use straps the majority of the time when they're training the snatch, and the weights they're snatching are light comparable to the weight you'll be using for a heavy snatch grip deadlift. So strap up for this one. There's no shame and you'll be able to get a much better workout for your quads, glutes, hammies, and upper back that way. And that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. If you were interested in trying out some snatch grip deads, then I hope you were able to take away something useful from this quick tutorial. It really is a great exercise for the posterior chain and a great upper back builder. I personally wouldn't make it a year-round mainstay, but you can definitely cycle it into your program a few times a year. Other than that, please be sure to like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and leave me some love in the comments. And if you enjoy the content I produce, please share your favorite stuff somewhere, and together, let's make hashtag Project 100K a reality. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.